Hi, I'm chopped off. It's David. I was stretching my mouth when you started. That'll be weird. <laughs> Does it matter? Yeah. No. Maybe Does it matter? No. Okay. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Um, we're going to talk about. Well, we're going to have a look at the micro supply. Ta-da! There it is. Should I go full screen on that, David? There we go. There it is. There it is. The micro supply. Doesn't it look sexy? Yep. All right. So, um, oh, I can just turn it on for you. Ah, oh, oh, come on. There we go. Anyway, um, yep, micro supply. It's coming along. We're just having a look at um, installing the code. Uh, the, the the what are we installing? Code and shit. Yeah, we're installing the <coughs> the IDE so that you can work on the code and other people can work on the code. I suppose yep. this video could be kind of instructional for anyone who wants to contribute too. Sure, um, it is open source. The code is all open source. It's on the GitHubs or the GitLabs. Yeah, and the library is pretty well documented. The, yep. the system specific code, less well documented. Right. Yeah. So I'll link it in down below. Um, we will have the code. So if you want to check it out. And, yeah, uh, yeah yep. we're doing some funny things at the moment to fit it on a micro. So. Right, yeah, it's <laughs> insane. Yeah, we've talked about, on the amp hour today, talked about fitting the code on the 32K. But I did that in my ST video um, early this week or last week, was it? Uh, yeah, where we talked about fitting the code. Oh, and by the way, we have our flex PCBs. Flex PCBs are in, but we don't have the chips yet. The board's actually turned up early. Check out the date. Yeah, there we go. Check out the date on it. It's got the 25th of November, and it is, um, what, the 22nd today. I and wonder if they print that on there if it's late. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. Anyway, they got delivered early, so my chips are still... So yeah, you were remarking that... They were able to manufacture these from scratch quicker than what Farnell's can, Element 14 can pick a couple of chips off the shelf yep. and send them here. Move yeah. it from a shelf yep. to a truck. A truck. They to made it faster. Yeah. yeah. They made it faster. Yep. Amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. Anyway, so we're going to um, install the entire tool chain to get it compiling. That's right. All yeah, right. We're going to set up VS Code with the GNU GCC tool chain and CMake, which is right. a build system generator, which is, Ooh. I'm going to get to what that is when we start talking about ninjas. Cool. And I actually mean that. And you know I know bugger all <laughs> about this because I've never... Anyway, Visual... <laughs> VS is Visual Studio. No, it's not... It's Visual Studio. It's Visual Studio Code. Code, Code is the difference. Which supports any compiler that you can... If you write your own compiler, you can write a plugin to support... Yeah. Work, work it in here. So it's yeah. just a GUI. Basically, yeah, you can. And it calls up the it calls up the command line compilers and the, it does yeah, it the, calls the command line. You right. basically set up what it right. what it sends to the command line. We don't have to do that though. Other people have done that for us. Right, got it. Yeah. Sorry about the audio. The mic is not. We're not particularly close to the mic here today. All right. So we've installed Visual Studio Code. That was easy and yep. quick. Yep. And we've installed the C C plus plus extension. Yeah. What else do we need to install? We need to install the thing you currently have on the screen, the CMake tools. Ah, oh, CMake tools, and you're, you were very excited when you realized that Microsoft bought Vector of Bool. Yeah, so Vector of Bool hadn't been maintaining the plugin for a while. Ah, so there's, okay. this is a plugin which is used a lot for people who develop in VS Code um, for embedded systems and with CMake. Um, yeah, the guy hadn't updated the plugin in about a year, so it's great that someone's taking on the project. Microsoft taking over. And what does CMake Tools do okay. for us? CMake Tools is just a, a wrapper, I suppose, for a tool called CMake, which we're going to have to install. Mm -hmm. um, so CMake is a system which generates a build system, a build system generator. So it doesn't build your project for you. Right. It doesn't make a pro. It, it it creates a project, and then calls the compiler from with the project kind of thing. Kind of thing. Yeah. So so in in <laughs> I'll give you a few examples. All so right. If you created an atollic project, there'd be like a proj file. Atollic. Um. Uh, it's a. What's an atollic project? So atollic is an IDE for um processes and right. systems okay. development right. stuff like that. ST have their own version of it right. called Cube MX IDE. Oh right, okay. Yep. So yep. that's it's an Eclipse based IDE and it has its own project files. Those tell you like the structure, what things to pass to the, the compiler and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And it also has what compiler to call and stuff like that. Right. But the the project files aren't very flexible. Right. So you couldn't swap out the compiler or at least not easily um, to for example an an updated compiler which has a particular bug fixed. 
Got it. Which yes, is, which we've done videos. Which is, which is yeah, what we actually got it. Yeah, which, okay. which is exactly what happened. So this is the reason that you're using Visual Studio Code instead of the Cube, instead of the ST software, the Cube MX. Yeah, we started in Cube MX. Right. Okay. Um, it's now, when we started, it was called Atolic. Just right. Oh, Atolic. it was. It was called actually called yeah ST. Atolic. Oh, Atolic. okay. Yeah. Right. So oh we, yeah. Okay. That that rings a bell. All yeah. Right. So that's what we started yep. with, and then. Or maybe it was like raw Eclipse. I don't remember, but it was an Eclipse thing, and right. then we couldn't. I couldn't get the latest GCC to to run, which had some fixes for um, a part of the GCC tool called uh, what is it? D it's the name demangling tool. <laughs> name demangling tool. Yeah. Um, right. <laughs> I don't remember the specific name of it uh, at All this right. time, but. It basically caused a memory overload, like a, a, a stack overflow in the right. compiler when you had lots of symbols. So when you have specific types of template code in yep. C++, it should just be fine, but it would it would just blow the stack. Right. It just like poof, and you're like, why'd that fail? <laughs> like there's no it's, it, no message at all. It just give you a stack overflow. Okay. Um, so think... we want to install this. CMake tools. Yeah, well, we were talking about why we changed. So there was a, a problem with the old compiler. I'll install this while and doing that. CMake is something, it's a a project generator. It like generates projects for different build tools. All right. Like, I suppose you could call, so there's a thing in, in Atollic called the internal builder. I'm not really sure if that's the project, the thing mm -hmm. that I'm talking about, but it has a build tool in it and it's linked to those project files. Right. Where CMake, it can just target any IDE and it generates set those uh, project files for you. Got it. With the settings for the compilers that you gave it, with the compiler you gave it. Ugh. Yeah. Right. It's, so it's so a... is, <laughs> I assume all that setup stuff is in some sort of setup file somewhere that we can, in the Git labbies that it we It won't be a big in? deal. No? No, okay, you right. won't even, you okay. might not even flinch. It'll just oh, be, okay. Yeah, just a all lot right. of clicking install for things. Okay, yeah. let's do it. All right, so we've installed that. What's, what's next? All right, so let's go get CMake itself. So that's just cmake.org slash download. Oh, oh, I've got to go to a browser. You do need that plugin too. That, oh, that TWXS CMakers. one. Yeah, that'll be nice. That one? Yeah. That just gives you syntax highlighting for CMake. Oh, okay. Well, yep. All that's, right. um, that's actually what you were talking about before. You were saying, how does VS Code um, do yeah, syntax Yeah, the first thing, because I, I, I don't know anything about this, and my first question was when I heard that you could... If you wrote your own Pigeon English compiler or whatever, you could install, you could write support and add it to Visual Studio Code. Yep. And then I asked, well, how does Visual Studio Code do the color syntax highlighting for your language, even though, like, yeah, yeah there's added a, as a plugin and it's good to go. Wow. Yeah, okay. I mean, the plugin work, there's a bit of work, but right, it's, yeah, it's, not, it's a bit of work. It's to not as much define, as define, okay, this, these are variables, this will be this color. Yeah, it's not enough to be in, too intimidating. Right. Okay, well, yeah. I'm sure that if you wrote a compiler, then you'd be able to write a... <laughs> yeah, that, you'd just, that'd yep. be a lazy day on the beach. Yep, yep. Yeah. Technically, I have written a compiler. I wrote a, um, I wrote a, uh, a wrote my own uh, programmable logic compiler. A PLC thing? A PLC compiler. Wow. Yep. So... Yeah, back in the day. <laughs> yep. Wow. It, so it generated assembly and stuff. It, no, it generated um, EEPROM images because it was for a finite state machine. Oh, okay. So it would, so it was compiler language. I made up my own language that then high level language that then uh, compiled into an EEPROM image that would, yeah, use it that as would... a finite state machine. Yeah. So mm. you use an EEPROM as a processor, basically, as a finite state machine processor. Mm. So, yeah. That cool. Was... That was a thing. Maybe I've got the code somewhere. Yeah. Anyway, um, right. So we installed CMake, CMake's tools, and Did now you you're saying... Did you document the source? Be interesting to see. Oh, I don't, I don't know. I honestly don't the know. We wouldn't be able to <laughs> probably make heads or tails of the compiler. No. Like, All right. Yeah. Where are we uh, Where Where are we going to today? Okay, cmake.org. And then just the first one um, under platform. No, under that'll platform? give you the source. I love how they've told the difference. This has new line line feeds, and this has <laughs> character tone line feeds. It's like that's the difference between the Windows yeah. and the Unix build. So when we installed in Visual Studio Code, we didn't actually install the actual CMake. We just installed support for CMake. Is that Yeah, correct? you're probably going to have to restart VS Code, but it's uh, not going to. Who cares? Whatever. <laughs> Do not add CMake to the system path. Should no, I add it? No. Totally add it. Add it? Yeah. System path for all users? Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, we're going to use CMake with a with a build system called Ninja. Ninja. So, um, the the build it's a it's a fast 
right? Uh, build system gives you some pretty good project files and seems to work with basically every target um, embedded, not. So we could avo anymore. avoided all this if we simply use CubeMX, right? Because it's all integrated. Sort together. of. You wouldn't be able to use the compiler we're going to install. Oh, okay. But it, but we'd be using their compiler. But I thought theirs was just the GNU. It's a special. Yeah, it's a, it's a, so um, the naming is like EA, EABI slash NUN slash GCC or whatever. Um, oh, right. So the it is the GCC. The is slightly uh, customized. So, it, so they've, it's, it's they've instead forked? of none, it's atolic slash. So they've forked the GCC stuff. compiler. Is that what you're saying? Uh, yeah, I suppose. Um, oh, it could okay. be the same thing with atolic inserted in the name. Right. Okay. Got it. Who knows? No, so, but we, but we will be using the GCC compiler. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, uh, right. Wait, yeah, because it's is more. That, is it installed? It's just more up to date. It's like. It's more. It's more betterer. More betterer. Um, is is that installed? Right, so should uh, Visual Studio needs to be restarted? Definitely. It'll start trying to configure the project folder. Let's just let's start off with a dummy project. No. Um, so just hit open folder. Yep. And then make a folder for a dummy project. Okay, we have dummy. Cool. All right. Um, now configure the workspace, I think. Oh, my God. Uh, that, that'll be easy. Just click file. File. <laughs> and uh, save workspace as. Save workspace as. And then just type a name. Dummy. There you go. Now you're in. Um, let's see if CMake. There you go. That's the, that's the dummy workspace. Yep. So now we're just going to type CMake. Let's see what it's found on your computer already. Yep. What's It'll found? probably found find nothing, but let's just see for now. Scan. Well, it looks like it's found a whole bunch of stuff. There you go. Let's have a look. Yes. Configure the project. Conf oh, sorry. You can't see that. Yes, configure the project. Uh, you'll probably want to leave the camera there. It'll continuously do that. Yeah. No CMake kits are available. What would you like to do? Scan the kits. There you go. You got none. So we're going to install one. Yeah. What we're is gonna, it? We're going to install the ARM um, ARM embedded compiler. No, no. You have to go to the browser. We're going to have to install it. Oh, what? I'll just Jeez. You. You're going to have to click install many times. All right. Not much work. Not not difficult. Just lots of pressing the same button. And you, I wouldn't see someone like me. Well, I would never have figured this out. Yeah. Well, would anyone looking at your if we just? It does if, have instructions if, if, on the git. Oh, I was going to say if you got hit by a bus yeah. and and, and all we had was the <laughs> right. But without those instructions, would people have been able? To, oh yeah, yeah. Right, they would have. CMake is standard. Right. People okay. know how to use CMake. You don't have to use it IDE right. either. So it would have been obvious that you were using CMake. All the yes. Right. All the all the Linux people would just be like, nah, nah, because yeah, and they'd run it from the command line. Yeah, probably. of course they would. Yeah, um, and it's easy. Yeah. You just like, okay. So what am I doing? Then, yeah, what am I doing? Um, so what do you want to do first? Let's get the build system because we can't use anything without it. So just type ninja dot org. Yeah, and then install it. It's just an executable. Download the ninja binary, obviously. Uh, yeah, one nine zero. Uh, yeah, you want to get the zip for Windows. I don't want a bloody zip. You'll like this. This install is easy. Oh, it's an XE? Okay, good. Oh, you don't have to run it. What? Huh? You what? don't want to run it. Why? Because we've got to put it we've got to put it in a folder. Yeah, don't run, no point. Alright, so go to your C drive or whatever drive you So you... do I copy that? Ah, just leave it there for now. We're gonna drag it out of it into a folder. You wanna have this at a pretty low directory, so let's just yep. put it right almost root. Almost root you C root. <laughs> I don't wanna put it in my C root. Yeah, you, you'll you want it. Well, if you have a space in the path, you'll get problems. So let's just... Oh, no, no. Let's make a folder called DevTools or something um, in there, because there's going to be a few of them. <laughs> DevTools, yeah? Yeah, cool. Okay. We've just put Ninja in a, one folder up from root. Yep, uh, one folder up from root. All right. Without now, a space in next. it. Next. What, what's next? Okay, next we're going to go um, arm embedded. Yeah. And I recently ported the project to 9. Which arm is... embedded.com? No, that's annoying. Developerarm.com? <laughs> yeah. Those sneaky people. Who, who owns embeddedarm.com? Sneaky. And they put an ad to make uh -huh. it first. Yep, they did. Probably a consultancy. All right. All right, so I'm going to click some things. Tell us what you're clicking. I'm I'll drink. I'm going to add the word toolchain. There we go. And, All right, uh, downloads? Yeah, go, yeah. And we're hoping to see um, the, the GNU 9. 
Yeah, there we go. GNU 9 2019 Q4. I think the Atollic one is limited to GNU 7.4 or something. <laughs> Some, well, somewhat out of date. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so if there's a 64-bit. 32. Oh, I was going to say 32-bit. There is no 64-bit installer, really. Seriously. Oh, well. <laughs> Sign for Windows 10 or later. There you go. Yeah, All right. Know. Someone doesn't like 64-bit. Someone's a 32-bit fanboy, whoever developed this, and it's that's dumb. all uh, That's all you're going to get, Sunshine. <laughs> 94 megabytes. The philosophy is probably more like you get nothing extra out of it. <laughs> it's probably like, why should, you know, we get nothing out of this. Right. Are we operating on 4-gig address <laughs> <this> order? No. <laughs> Ridiculous. Uh, boy. All right. Come on. Yeah. You can do it. Oh, minute to download. What world are we living in? <laughs> Isn't it pretty? There we go. Look at that. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> there we go. Beautiful. Beautiful. It says hello regularly. So this is the GCC by compiler. Arm. Yeah, by the... By arm. By arm, yeah. Right. So they've forked it, have they? And it's theirs? No, they manage this project. They manage it. Because this okay. is the this is the ARM version of GCC. Oh, okay, right. It's not GCC with support for ARM. It's. I mean, I suppose they forked it, but they manage it. Okay. Yeah. Right. Got it. Five hundred meg for a compiler. Mm. I was in. A, yeah, I've only got five gig left on my C drive. Yeah, I was in. A, we're not going to install anything that requires five gig, are we? No. Not anymore. All right. Visual Studio was it, huh? Mm. That wasn't that big. No. Didn't seem to. It seemed to install no, no, really it's, quick. Yeah, it's pretty lightweight. Yeah. This Visual Studio is like nine gigabytes, the real one. Really? Yeah. Mm. Maybe bigger. I think twelve if you put wow. all the things I normally do for mobile stuff and add path yep. to environment variable. Yep. yep. Now your CMake will just pick it up easy. It it often picks it up anyway because CMake's right. clever. Do we need the README? No. No. And what's what's it doing here? I don't know. Let's type version. Well, that's because I didn't type the executable name. And the executable is not in that directory. Mm-hmm. Um, a wizard. Uh, L? I don't remember the net command for list. LS is it in Linux. You've just lost your, uh, Duh. your Linux badge. No, no, this is Windows. No, Windows. Okay. Do we care? It was the latest version. Uh, no, not really. E-A-B-I. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, I know. The fact that I've remembered that is not a good sign. <laughs> there you go. So it's uh, uh, 25th of October, so it's really new. Right. All right. So I can shut that down? Mm-hmm. All right. And now restart VS Code. Restart VS Code. VS Code will happily have a scanning icon at the bottom right. What if it doesn't? Uninstall Windows. All right. It's time to get rid of Windows. <laughs> yeah. Um, Kamigatsa. Oh, there we go. Right. <laughs> yes. It gave up last time because you had no kits. Oh, okay. There you go. Now it's detected it. Um, up the top. Yep. So click that. No, the, the real one. Uh, that the, one? Yeah. The real one. Now it's going to do some things and tell you nothing will work because we don't have a CMake file. This is all so obvious. How does anyone, like, learn how to do this shit? Okay, well. By watching this video. I uh, suppose. So, now we're going to go to my, my CMake repo, which is used to help people like this. <laughs> really. Right. I get lots of requests for it. <laughs> oh, this is right. So this is yours. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, right. browser again? Yeah. This is a, the most simple CMake I could do. Where um, are we going? Yes. <laughs> so here we have a... Dude, lose the photo of you with the bow tie. It's funny. No. <laughs> lose it. I want to make a cringier Vote one. Vote in the comments down below, should he lose the photo? Should I lose it, to... or should I double down and get a bigger bow tie? <laughs> bigger bow tie. A glow. I've got, I've got the glow tie. I I've want... got the lead one. Have you one. seen um, Bill Nye's one? No. It's like a normal one, right. except it's way too big for his head. You don't have Git. Let's install Git. That's going to have to be an additional step. That I, I read that as scam. Git scam. <laughs> is, that how, is that how it's pronounced? Uh, someone in the comments will have to say with a phonetic spelling, which I won't be able to do. Okay. Download that one? Oh, uh, yeah. Has it automatically detected our OS? That's 45 meg. When I was a boy. <laughs> yeah, they added TLS to it and then it was big. What's TLS? Um, the secure transport layer. Oh, yes, right. Yeah. Yeah. Do I have to change any of this? I don't know. Let's see. 
check daily for Git for Windows updates. Oh no, I don't want that. It's not checked. Why? Why would do I want to check that? You don't. I'm Good. reading. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is that it? Yeah, it's fine. All right. Ugh. Is there another option? What? Vim will be confusing for you. Oh, okay. Yes. Note Notepad plus plus. VS Code. Oh. Use that. Yep. Yep. What's VS Code Insiders? You don't have that. What is it? Um, they just have extra features that are unstable. You told me that there was no paid version of Studio. I assume that's no, no. The insiders it, is it's a... still free. Oh, it's like beta. Is, is yeah, that yeah, like a beta? It's, it's oh, like okay. Beta. Git from command line only. Git from use Git from Git bash only. This is all so obvious. That, that's fine. Recommended. That, yeah. Open SSL. Definitely. Check Windows style. Is that yep? Default. Is this new? You haven't seen it before. No. No, I probably have. I just clicked next really quickly. You're right. Well, yeah, we should next probably is fine. Next. <laughs> yep. Uh, use Minty. Yep. Fine. Won't matter. <laughs> It'll be added to Path and we'll use PowerShell. And file <laughs> system case enable Git Credential Manager. Yes. Is that all right? Yes. All right. Enable experimental build. No. 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 So install. Yes. It's all so obvious. I mean, All we want to do is compile our source code for a little embedded project. You will be <laughs> clicking many buttons. There are still buttons to go. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Anyway, this is the documentation for anyone who wants to um, play around with the <clears throat> micro supply code and build it yourself. Yeah, the long, <laughs> the so, long, long form. Launch Git Bash. Sure. Do it really? Uh no. Uh Come on, you just want to get this finished. Yeah, right. Yeah, finish. <laughs> All right. Next. What do we have to do? Restart. Probably your whole computer. No, I'm not restarting my whole computer. All right, type git. That's annoying. All right, uh, restart VS Code. I hope I don't have to have git to path. That'd be annoying. Installers should add themselves to path if you check a box like all the other ones. Didn't we pay attention when we installed it? Dummy workspace. And then just type git hyphen hyphen version. It needs it doesn't matter, it'll say not a command. That's fine. Oh no! Alright, so let's type press start. Yeah. Type path. Press enter. Click environmental variables. And then click path, double click on it. The one that says GNU tools arm embedded. Ah, uh, that one there. Double click. Edit. Double click. Uh, or, yeah, or edit, it doesn't matter. Click on the bottom. And dump it in. Dump it in and backspace until you get rid of Git. I just do I have to get rid of the quotes? No. Nah, yes, you do. You have to also yep. get rid of Git. I just wanted the format to be the same way it copies. Um, get rid of the word Git exe. Oh, really? Okay. Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, your path may not have refreshed, so just type Git. It might work. Yeah, we have to restart the thing. Yay! No, it's not recognized. We've come and gotcha. Maybe VS Code has it already. Let's see. Because VS Code integrates Git, it just, you didn't have Git, so that was confusing. But it might have installed with it, but I'm, but I'm still a bit confused why it... Okay, so Git... So, see, this is this is the Git mm -hmm. thing. Um, so, Git is set up now. It's just not appearing in PowerShell. Okay, I think you have to restart your login, log out. The PowerShell path hasn't refreshed or something. Right. Okay, well, stop recording. We'll be back. Git! Yay! So, now we're going to pull the project. We're going to close this workspace. We don't need it anymore. Yep, done. Perfect. Now do we get our one out of Git Labs? We do. Uh, oh. I'll, I'll take the mouse for a second. This will be difficult to explain. Yeah, so we're just going to clone this repository because you're not... Um, the way you work with Git, you don't work... On you don't the... work on the actual code that's in the Git. No. You've got to pull it out. Yeah. So clone is like pulling it out. Yeah. It's like downloading it. Pull is actually another command. Right. So clone is like take everything. Right. Like from scratch and yep. pull is like get the new stuff. And where does it put it? Apparently in your root directory because I forgot to save it. So oh, we're gonna really? have to what? We're gonna have to fix that. Why not put it in users, Dave? It should put it in a folder. Would I want like to configure this project? Hang on. Hell so yeah. so where so where's my code? It's in users C make users day. Uh, it's in. Yeah, you can delete that folder later. It's not important. This is another intermediate step just to make sure that CMake and the build process works. 
but this is how you'd really import your code though, right? Yeah. Okay, so this is the, it's, yeah, just it's just in the tiny, wrong... It's just a tiny project, so it's simple. So this is how it runs the build, how it runs debug. So it runs um, this file using OpenOCD. Um, yeah, so this runs using a plugin called Cortex Debug. So we have to get that. Kind of hoping Microsoft also take this project on. I don't think it's been updated for a while. And then maybe Marcus can get some money for all the work he's done for free for some reason. Maris. Maris? Oh yeah, Maris. Maris. Thank you. Yeah, he's done a fantastic job. So if somebody didn't want to use all this crap and wanted to use... You, you can know, install open... CubeMX or any other uh, uh, compiler, can they just take your source code out of GitLab and just... Yeah. Um, just they, they can use CMake to generate it? a few different project types. Um, not all project types, but a lot of them. Right. So they have a lot of options. Um, that's actually why you often want it, because you know you got a bunch of people working on a project, and they all want to use their own IDE. Right. They all want yeah, to use yeah. their own system. Yeah. And CMake lets them do that. Right. So that's installed now. Now that launch script actually makes some sense to something. So did we already install OpenOCD? I don't think we did. No. Oh yes, we did, didn't we? And then in, we're going to install that. That's going to probably link you to SourceForge. Jeez, this is old. So this is WordPress. Yeah, but it's still updated. You want to go getting OpenOCD. And then we're going to go to the Windows one managed by some random name. Mm. Freddy Choppin one. Obviously, Freddy Choppin's the man. Yeah. He's right? Done, he's done the right job. I think Release that's the one version. I use. Yep. That's not the one I use. Try the other one. <laughs> Livu Ionescu. Livu, Livu. It's not. The website's changed from when I got it, I think. So what's OpenOCD do for us? That's what actually connects to your debugger, and that's what programs your device. Oh, right. Yeah, this is a really important oh, part. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, of course. This is the main part for, this is something that regardless what people use, yeah. you know, VS Code or Eclipse or whatever, they still have to use OpenOCD. There are a couple other, they might be able to use the JLink thing or ST. Um, right, we've just got like a library now, like a, a where do we install it? Like it's not an executable install. Bin 64? Yeah. Good. The XE is there. So now what we do, we move that into that dev tools folder. We'll see C slash dev tools. And this is where I'm a little sketchy with my memory, but go file preferences. Yep. Yep. Settings? Yep. Yep. Sorry about that. Type open OCD. Edit JSON. What? I don't remember this one. <clears throat> I've got to Google this. <laughs> Go to the color syntax highlighting. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's helping you a lot. Really? Yeah, it's telling you that path will input wrong because the slash is this way instead of this way. So those are actually escape characters. So oh. it's actually telling you everything you need oh, to know. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, it looks wrong. Ah. But it's telling you you're wrong. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Super useful. It's cleverer than I am. Oh, oh, I think it's in here. Um, so in, in, I mean, that's the command, right? We have right. to, we have to add this. I just don't know how. Maybe I can just search this. Someone's added it to a project somewhere. I believe we can put this in our project, but we can also do it as a global setting for your, all of your VS Code projects, right. um, which I was going to do because it doesn't seem like you're going to so use it for something else. Um, copy that. No. <laughs> Unlikely to use it for something else. So you just want it to work all the time. Uh-huh. Yeah. Just wanted to see if it already knew it. This is maddening, really. Oh, allow access. There you go. Windows blocked it. Huh, look at that. That's open a CD running. Cool, it just worked. It must have found it already. Well, just using that path that I pasted in. It may have already known where it was or it came with the plugin. Right. Ah. Let's just, let's just see something. I, I think no. this is, I don't think this message is real. Like, I don't think that's telling me it's running. I think that's the command it uses to run it. So I don't think it is working. I changed my mind. Sorry, I forgot this one. I've done pretty good so far, eh? <laughs> Wait, what? It's just it's exactly exactly verbatim what I yes. what I thought it was. That's so frustrating. Sorry, I wasted some time. Okay, um, we're gonna run that. That'll work, probably. So just try run it. There you go. Allow access to the o executable. Nice. And run it. Yeah, but obviously on nothing because we've plugged nothing in. Plugged nothing in, yep. 
and now it can't find anything, so it timed out. But, right. But. All right. Next. Good stuff. What's our next task? We're gonna have to configure your Git, Mike. What, what do you mean, two different codes? The USB one and the other. Oh, one. the right. Yeah, because we've got two processors inside this. For those that don't know. Yeah. So. One is the USB isolated USB side, which handles the USB PD, the USB HID, the USB um. Uh, the serial comms and you know other yeah. primary side housekeeping. The other one actually runs the user interface with the LCD and controls the power supply. And, yeah, yep. yeah, that's and right. That's on the isolated side, and we've just got a little um, uh, serial uh, opto. Yep, going between. I think it's capacitively coupled. Eh? It's one of those clever digital capacitive right. ones. Right, one of those capacitive. Yeah, yeah it's, got little, it's got a modulator and demodulator in it. And a little, sends a signal over and a capacitor a little or something. Ten picofarad capacitance inside it. I yeah. think so. Yeah. Right. Yeah, they're much low power. The the old one used like way too much power for the, yep. the board weight. That's all right. Much. All right. So we're just going to configure your Git username. Okay. Yeah. All right. No yeah. idea. I, maybe I. Yeah, I must have had a random password in there. That's what password managers are for. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Okay. Good thing. That yeah. was lucky. <laughs> so now I've got the Microsoft Buy USB set up. That's fantastic. So okay. let's open up main, I guess, in main. So do we want the other code as well? Or? Not yet. No, no, no. okay. No, no yet. Actually, yes, 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 you're right. Let's do it all at once while it's working. Cause you... <laughs> Why? Because it might not work tomorrow? It all, it should. Somebody break something? It 100% saves it, I can tell you that. And it's already got my credentials, so I shouldn't have to password that again. Mm -hmm. It's not bad. So what if I just manually copied the code out of GitLab and put it in that subdirectory myself? Like this? Yeah. If yeah. I actually download it as a zip and unput it in that subdirectory, does it not set up things or does it doesn't it... set up Git right? Okay. So if if you change like there's strings all over the place, right? Yep. So if you change like instead of saying hello it says Batman. All right. Right. And then you pull it push it to the repository, you won't be able to do that. Okay. Or if you things like that. Um, I mean, I suppose you, you, there is ways to set it up. Got it. I don't know. I yeah. Okay. So how do we push Git back? Does Visual Studio yes. have built-in support for Git? Yes. Right. So we don't have to do all this terminal no, shit. No. All right. Geez, how big's your source code? Blame ST. We will henceforth blame ST. Yeah. One hundred and thirty-one meg for a source code that goes into a. Power supply, 131 megs. Not our fault. It's ST's fault because of their bloated libraries. Is that correct, David? I'm checking, but I think so. It could be a. I could have like an installer in there or something. Or have you got data sheets in there or something like? I it's might. Not... It's possible. Right. I'm checking. I don't know. I'll get back to you. And you haven't mixed hardware in there. Hardware's a different. Different. Git. I don't know. Whatever. More, there's an ST library path. There right. is. It's yep. there for sure. Our library's pretty big too, though. Yeah. yeah cool. Whack that on. over and show people. Oh, this isn't the documented one, but yep. Yep. There we go. Yeah, this isn't up to date because they've been modified in the US. Authored one. five months ago. Mm -hmm. Normally it'd show your last. Yeah. Deposit. The it? last one's from the USB. So this yeah. has a. It, um, yeah. Oh yeah, you, you haven't worked on the main code for ages, have you? It's no. all been USB. Oh, I worked on it yesterday. Oh well, yeah. J just okay. to but just to add it. that support. For right. A yep. Thing, but it's really got nothing new. Right. Um, yeah. So, let's open up this. Micro supply. I don't uh, want new. We want to open a folder. We want to reveal it <laughs> in Explorer. Reveal. That's really useful. Are you being sarcastic or is that no? It is really useful. useful. Look at this because you could be like, let's get the binary to build it to load it yep. using the programmer, and then it opened it for you, and, and it selects it for you. All right. See, it's opened and selected. Got it. And then you can just be like, boop, there it is. Got it. There's the binary file. Let's build it. So just press Control Shift P and then just type build. I guess. You guess. <laughs> well, I think I need to do configure. And I probably have to select build mode too. It'll be debug, so it definitely won't work. Because <laughs> of the binary size thing. 
<laughs> binary size thing? Yeah, how it's like only just fitting within oh, a few okay, hundred bytes. Oh, okay, because your code is literally a couple hundred bytes short of the... The capacity, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but why wouldn't it work? It fits, the it's a couple of, hundred bytes in. It'll only fit on min size rel. All the debugging oh, information okay. must go. Right. All right, now I need to set up Ninja. <laughs> What's Ninja going to do for us? Uh, so that's the actual build system. That's what coordinates. Oh, this is your script. Yeah. Right. So that's what coordinates the calling of Jesus. The, the calling of GCC and LD wow. and G plus plus and obj copy or whatever, whatever you use. I think that's what does all that. Wow. Yeah. Lots of stuff. Lots of stuff. Ninja. Path. Can you just like use Visual Studio Code and just install that plugin for the arm and that's it and just generically use it do you need all this other stuff all this make stuff and all this ninja I, stuff and i think so right so you could you're just using these tools because you like them because they're more better no no i think you need to oh you need to use them yeah wow yeah wow so anyone who wants to use visual studio code to develop generically for an arm processor has to do all this I mean, I'm wrong a lot, but right. I think so, yeah. Wow. Uh, Hence, one of the advantages of just using the vendor's tools, right, is that you download it and you're just going to go from day one. Just go, much. Yeah. yeah. Like, this isn't, like, again, it's not complicated. It's just lots of things that have to be done in the right order. Yes, and or you have to know what they roughly, are. And roughly why. the right order. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, of course, yeah. It's probably not a strict order. Yeah. Geez, you're fussing over your um, tabs there. Just to You're go all the way. Tab OCD. Yeah. <laughs> Get it? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Open. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here all week. <laughs> okay. So at least we know where it is now. Dev tools. Yeah. And that's why it's easier. <laughs> this might not work. Fine. Path variable it is. Let's do it the wrong way. Sounds good. Yep, it's going into the environment variables, folks. Yep. Knee deep. Windows environment variables. And you don't have to restart. Work. No, no, no. no. We don't know yet. We probably oh. have to do that login logout thing. Login logout to Windows to get the path to work again. Yeah. Jeez, that sucks. Yep. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> we'll be we'll back. We'll be back. All right. So we're in like Flynn. Yep, so press Control shift p Control shift p This is the shortcut in VS Code. Press Enter. Configuring. It's doing things. Press yes. Oh, geez, you're in the dummy workspace. Oh, I'm in the dummy workspace. Okay. All right. Control shift Actually, wait for those loading bars. Let's, let's Would you just... like to configure this project? Heck yes. You could have said that before. <laughs> it's exactly what we wanted it to say before, by the way. All right. Um, insiders, this is that thing you were talking about. Do you want to be an insider? Oh, I don't want to be an insider, no. No! No. Don't show me this again. Cool. No. Um, all right, let's do it anyway, because I'm not entirely sure if this is all good. Press Control shift p Press Enter. Nice. That looks promising. It is actually really good. Press Control shift p Type Rebuild. Press Enter. And that's it. And that's building our code. It is. That's compiling. Yep. And there it is. 30,811 bytes of 32,768. And this isn't even, I think there's one oh, more. You said there were like 300 bytes left. I think there's one more push. I think it's one version behind. Oh, um, okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah, oh, sorry. okay. Right. We didn't, uh, right. So you hadn't down, you hadn't committed the latest to Git. I don't think so. Yeah, right. Yeah, this okay. is the hacky thing I had to do to make All it right. fit. Just a lookup table of serial <laughs> commands. Anyway, it doesn't matter. <laughs> right, so this is your code. So it this is. is the code for the micro supply. The USB so, side, yeah. The part so that we probably want people's help with the most. Right, rich tech, what's in there? That's just their code? Yeah. Have you touched that or is that just theirs? But yeah. Yeah, we have to we have to do some user implemented functions. Okay, so you've 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 tweaked that, yeah? Yeah. It's that that's what user is? Yeah. Right. So that stuff's not important. All right. That is. That is. Okay. Yeah. Source sync capabilities. Those don't do anything because it's already pre-compiled. Ah, Those right. macros don't get inserted. Yeah, okay. Yeah. USB PD. So this is your code? Yeah. 
Uh, you bit bang in. Yeah. Why, yeah. Do, why do we have to bit bang? Because they weren't on the right pins. We didn't have an I2C uh, yep. thing on yep. there. They, they were yep. shared with the programmer or something. Annoying. Yeah. Can we just like click on that to go see that code? Oh, sure. Yes, we can. I, I just did control click without even knowing that was a thing and I did it. Microsoft oh, have predicted your behavior. They have. Yep. They have totally. Yeah. There yep. you go. I've never used this before and I knew how to use it. Yeah, you'll like this one. And oh, look a at the static lamp. Have a look wrapper. at the, the side. Just yeah, wow. give it a go. You'll like this. You can whiz around holding it down too. Ah, right. Oh, that's kind of neat, right? It's kind of neat. I've seen that before though. It's good if you're like, because you can't read that, but it's good if you can visually see and you remember that. Oh, yeah, I, I nested that eight tabs deep. So that that's the code that, you yeah. Know. Right. Yeah, I yeah. think this is the, so this isn't the, this isn't the peripherals. So as I said, the library is documented for common, but not so much system specific. Right. So I'd go to common and that's where you get all the documented code. Uh, common as in main, you mean? No, nah, scroll up. And there's a folder called common. Oh, it's a file called common. Okay. Yeah. Is that just your, um, you typically just, that's how you develop your projects? Is have a project, has a, a it's sort of just common? happened. Um, yep. I, I have another structure that I have been trying to use, but right. Um, so that's how I did this one. <laughs> we've got the keypad and we've implemented a uh, Kalman filter. Yep. Really basic one so, that yeah. lets you, um, so if you're trying to calibrate the device yep. and you've got a little bit of like ripple on the output, you don't want to calibrate on a rippled value. Yep. You want to you filter to the, the yep. stable version of it, so just run a Kalman filter on it. Yep. You've got to be careful to turn it off, though, because if you don't, it looks like the supply is broken because right. it doesn't change. <laughs> it, it's an endless one. It'll keep converging to oh, zero I was going to say, forever. it, it doesn't have a... purpose yeah, yeah, yeah. of it. it. It doesn't have a timeout. It <laughs> converges to the, yeah. the point of yeah. stability forever. Yeah. It doesn't have a... Yeah, no time, time yeah. out. What's a packed tuple? A packed tuple? Do you know what a tuple is? Uh, no. Uh, it's like a struct, except you give it a bunch of types. Right. And they aren't, you don't have to name them. Right. Yeah. It's useful for... So, it packed because all the binary is, like, right next to each other. Right. There's no, right. no padding between it. Yep. And then um, tuple because they're, like, unnamed fields. All the variables, like, in a struct are unnamed. Got it. Yeah. And you retrieve them with, like, a key or an index or something. And there's our, um... Yeah, the normal tuple's broken because it doesn't do that. It doesn't, it's not packed. Got it. So that's our uh, code for the USB uh, PD, the rich tech. Yeah, that's our code. That's that the one that doesn't turn on. Yeah. That doesn't do turn mean? the device on. What do you mean doesn't turn the device on? Stupid rich tech. Uh, and it's not rich tech's fault, really, probably. But the stupid chip wouldn't turn on. Oh, okay, right. Even though you're trying to force it to. I tried. Yep. And they, these are basically I squared C commands that you're yeah yeah I had it I had it send into it so I can I can get the chip ID and all that stuff but I can't yep. actually get it to initiate the damn transaction the second it got I got something back I was ready to go right I'm like I'm like ready to go with <laughs> the library and you know but I couldn't something right. I don't know something, I was doing something really stupid like probably but for the life of me I couldn't figure out what it was got it all right so we've built our code and we've got our bin file yeah yeah and that's what will go in our chip that's yeah? right in the usb side and then we'll just use the um we've we haven't downloaded it yet but we've got to download the um st um uh, the, the sorry the, the, the what is it the st link um code the yeah. st link or you can um, now, now that you have this set up you could just press f5 and what's that going to do that'll load it oh the you don't debugger. need it anymore oh you don't need the ST stuff anymore. You oh, just... okay. So this will talk directly to it. Yep. Okay. And it'll Sweet. debug. You can step through code if you're bored. Sweet. I mean, you'll be able to step through no code in the USB side. None. Cause right. Because I've stripped away all the symbols and everything you could possibly oh, use to okay. debug. It'll, right. It will give you assembly, though. If you want to look at assembly, it'll step through that. Yeah, it's all right. What the hell happened to my... Yeah, I... yeah Open OCD or Co the Cortex debug does a d disassembly of the binary. Right. It's awesome. I'm looking for my cable that I got. I'm also looking. It's not here. It's a little box. It looks like someone... No, I, th it... no, I actually tossed the box. Because this thing does not um, connect. It's got a header, the STM32. This is STM8. Um, STM32 uh, does not... Um, it uses a 16-way... Um, no, 20-way, is it? Yeah, 20-way. Uh, 
0.1 inch pin header, whereas we need a 10 way, what is it, point? I don't know, small. 1.25 millimeter um, one pin millimeter. pitch. One, one, one millimeter pin yeah. pitch, yeah. Yes, yeah, I think it is. I think you're right. No, it's all right. We're not going to program it now anyway. Yes, yes, we can. No. We don't need the header. We can do this without it. What? Yeah, yeah, I've, I've set this up so we don't need to. Oh, because of the bootloader. Yeah, let's do it. Let's get the whole the whole process. There's One some... micro supply. I'll plug it into just any USB. You'll need to rip the bottom of the micro supply off. Yeah, but I don't want to put an older version of firmware on here. Eh. No. I don't load it back on. No, I don't want to load it back. Nah, I want to keep it. You sure? Yep. Look, this, this, yeah, this this video has been long enough. So let's um. All right. So yeah. So all we do anyway. The point is, let's just explain what we were going to do. Is we're just going to plug this into the USB, and the ST chips actually contain a bootloader in them. They come pre-programmed. Is that correct? Yeah, we can we can actually boot it up without programming it. So yeah, we can do that. So um. Um, 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 yeah. Um, so this um, this open uh, this OCD open OCD will talk to the debugger. Uh, will talk to the bootloader, and um, we'll be able to up upload the firmware over USB. But that only applies to the micro that's on this USB side. We we did have it working at one stage where we actually programmed the secondary processor over the yeah, isolator. Yeah. That'll take some time. Yeah. But it doesn't um, work anymore. It's broken. Uh, it's not broken. We just don't have the same serial port. Oh, okay. Yeah, we got the HID right. HID system. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. This yeah, thing yeah. expects a serial port. Right. The ST thing. Yep. Fortunately, the main help we need at the moment from contributors is on the USB side, so it's right. probably not a big deal. Show you, show the peeps. Drag it over. It's old. Nice. Yeah. That seems Visual Studio twenty twelve. That's old. That seems about right. Yeah. All right. Do you accept this? It's GNU. It's a GNU public license thing. That means you can probably ask them for the real source of the project. Yeah. Um, they'll probably take like two months for it. Yeah. Uh, the recipient shall comply with regulations. Do you plan on complying with the regulations? Yep. Go. Nice. Ah, oh, piss off. Do you have a login? You must. Yeah. Fuck. No, I no. In my video, I used a disposable <laughs> throwaway plugin. Uh, login. Regret. <laughs> I signed up as Marty McFly. Regret. I... Much regret. <laughs> Much regret. <laughs> really? Yep. Oh man, this is bullshit. Email address or password does not match our record. You have to make an account. Oh, oh piss off. Look at this shit. What is your salutation? Look at this shit. No, no, you no. You do no. need it. You need it for Cube as well. Completely retarded. It won't let me verify my email. Maybe it's not a bot. Maybe you have to, don't have to. That's just a. Oh, okay. Maybe that's just a rendering glitch. Threw us right out. Is it balked? Yep. Yep. It's completely rooted. Email verification. Ah, it wasn't doing that before. Oh wow, it's it's careful. Looking for you on some spam lists or something. Yeah. Nah, I can see why. Got to put my phone number in. Make sure to edit this out. Oh my god, that's not your number. <laughs> you think? <laughs> no, that is, that looks like your number to me. <laughs> that's totally my phone number. Hate ST. The download really. button is not there. Where the hell the download? I went through all that and oh. the download buttons. Wait, you have to click plus. What plus. the? Plus. Get software. Oh. That was weird. <laughs> what exactly are they trying to do? Piss everyone off is what they're trying to do. Worked. Congratulations. Let's click inside my screen capture. <laughs> we all do that. You mean it's not the right program? I heard something. That's your phone. Oh, was it? <laughs> Not the right program. We're just going to get the other one. You don't have to do any more login or anything. The download yeah, button's man. just there. But I thought it was supposed to work directly from Visual Studio. It does using with... Using the open OCD. It does for debugging and stuff like that. When you have it connected with the ST-Link. Right. But if you want to use the bootloader, that's... You, you sacrifice... Oh, okay. Right. All right, debuggability. Right. But you don't okay. you don't get debug... Oh, well, we don't want to do the de debug today. I mean, we don't want to... We were just going to download this to show people quickly. So... Yeah, I was just going to show people how to actually get it... Right. How to program it. Um, but the flipping program is not listed in Google at the moment. Right. Yeah, because ordinarily we wouldn't do it via the bootloader. We just do it via the RMST. You would have the cable come in from... Yeah. Here, yeah. and you just. It doesn't make it a. The back of the it door. doesn't make a huge difference using the bootloader to the 
ST from the USB side at the moment because we get no debugging either way. Right. And they're about the same speed. That's the program. Flash Loader Demonstrator. Thank you. Flash Loader Demonstrator. Very intuitive name for something. There we go. And it's just a demonstrator because they wrote it as a demonstrator and then, oh, it's a useful tool, but they didn't bother renaming it as, you know. It's pretty uh, useful. <laughs> You're still Windows You think? User. Yeah. <laughs> what are they doing? You think a tool to... Use the USB bootloader. Use the USB bootloader, which is the main feature of your product. They probably have another way like, to do it. It's the only way I know. It's probably some other way. No, I've, I've seen this with other manufacturers as well. There we go. Flash bootloader thingo. Yeah, so right? So ordinarily, we would just open the backup, hold a button down and plug it in. Right. And then you'd select the port and then it'd just hit next. And, then and hit. by the way, the button on there is goes to a physical pin. What's the pin called? Boot zero. Boot zero goes to the boot zero pin, and if you pull it high or low or whatever. Yeah, it's not an ordinary GPO. No, it's a. It's you can't use it. It's not dual use. No, no. I it's don't, just I don't a, think so. so they've wasted a pin dedicated to I that. I think it's literally only for yeah. bootloader. Right. So if you put that, if you um, put that pin low or high. Um, if you put it low. Low. When you power on. Now, can you do it any time? Is it interrupt? It's when you power on. When you power it on. So it must be it low. It does nothing otherwise. Right. You can read it. You can read it as an input. Right. Okay. But that's using a special register inside the, right. the debug module or something like that. Got it. There is a boot thing that tells you what its status is. Okay. So you could use it as an IO, as an input if you wanted to, as a regular input if you, you were could so use desperate it. that you needed one You could extra use pin. it as an input. Right. Yeah. All right. So, all right, so then that will then um, upload Yeah, the you select code. a hex file or you select a bin file, yep. and then you just hit next and it goes... Well, where do we select our file from? I think uh, it'd be the next window. Next. Right, yeah. If you unscrew the all thing right. and plug it in. And it'd sharp as a port, yeah, sharp as a com port. I mean, you could do it. It, it does take only a minute. This part's no. actually fast. No. Yeah. Nope. Yes, nope. it will sharp as a com port. Yep. Ordinary Why moment. doesn't it sharp as a com port? Because we don't have the driver, but I installed the driver the other day. ST, um, no, this um, isn't a com port. You're, it's working as is. That's why it said device is not recognized. That's why it didn't say that. Oh, because we haven't pushed the button. No, no. I, oh, yeah, the, you're talking about the COM port thing. Yeah. Yes, because we haven't pressed the button. We can undo it and do it. It only takes about a minute. No, nah, it's all right. It's very fast. Anyway, there you go. That's um, how we would update the... Yeah, if you're working on the device, there's a, there's a hole in the back of the case and you just press it yep. through the pin. There's no hole in that case because we didn't have the button back then. And what happens if you press it and you don't go through with the process? Screwed. You can always You're do screwed. it again. No, You're you screwed. can always do it again. No, With, without once... going through this process? No, no. The button's fine to press. Oh, okay. <laughs> there you go. If they, if they start the, the update process, then if they the start process the is interrupted. Interrupted, then they're screwed. But then okay. no, they're still not screwed. They can always do the process again. All right. But ordinarily, we wouldn't do that. We would be using the this and just plug it into the back of it. Yeah. Yeah. Although, yeah, again, the, the USB right. side, there's no benefit either way. All right. Well, that was incredibly painful, David. Yes. <laughs> At least you understand now why I was like, can I just open the project? Like, I'm like, yes. Yeah. And yeah. then... No. I, I had seen the source code before, but I had never it, seen the... It's like, yes and oh, no. no. <laughs> yeah, no, I had never seen the... I had never set up the full... Oh, no. ...environment. I've just realized something. What? One more tool. What? Doxygen. You need the docs. Oh, I was going to mention Doxygen. You need the docs. That's easy to install, though. Just as installer. No login process. Quick, quick. We have to make it quick. I'll do it then. Yep. If you don't know, Doxygen is a, um, a tool that will um, allow you to generate, auto-generate documentation for your code. Mm. As long as you document your code in a certain way, using certain um, uh, script language de definers that Doxygen know. Probably talking out my ass here, but as it's long as right. it knows them, then yeah. it'll generate... Yeah. Compliant documentation. Yeah, I'll show you. Um, so these turn them um, to brief, but... Oh, this is the device-specific stuff. If you took here... You so put you have, at brief. These are instructions. So at yeah. brief is an instruction to... Yeah, and, and then doxygen. T parameter is template parameter. Yep. The value system in the tuple. And then you get things like that. This is a meta class, so you don't get very effective documentation in those. But um, yep. there you go, things like that. You document all the parameters. And do we have an output example? A, yeah, I'm going to generate it for you. Yep. It takes, it's quite quick, so. It's part of the build process. CMake yep. runs it. Got it. Go. So, I'm going to install that. It's a great tool. Everyone should use Doxygen, or if you use one of those XML equivalents, right. they're, they're good too. Okay. So, there's others. Yeah. There's other competing ones. Let's copy this path. Cause... And there's fanboys of each, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're all fine, though. 
Yeah. But they're not compatible with each other, so you've got to pick one. Right. So I think Doxygen can open some different formats. Okay. Right. What I... What? Anyway. <laughs> okay. Woo! Okay. Um, it may actually just detect Doxygen the, media, the, the moment I... What, what does the word immediate mean? That, that's not a word. Immediate. It's not a word, is it? Found Doxygen. See, CMake ah. immediately found it. That's wow. what CMake is for. All right. That's what it does. Wow. It's a beast. That's, pre <laughs> that's pretty impressive. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So it'll fail the build because it won't fit, but Doxygen will build anyway. Right. Or it won't because it failed the build. Whoops. Hold on. Like we can just we we'll skip some build process build steps. Or we'll uncomment the Doxygen code. If Doxygen found. Yeah. Apparently, I'm a wizard and uncommented the code that does it. <laughs> I mean, commented the code that did commented it. Commented the code that did it. it. Probably wasn't on purpose. So I just. No, you were mucking around. Yeah. 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 See how that's loading. That's because it's generating yep. many files. Right. Um, it's probably got a fault. See how it's suddenly changed color, some of the things? Or it's a HTML for each one with a yeah, HTML. main HTML. Yeah, see how I did reveal in Explorer yep. and it selected the file? Yep. That's what it's useful for. And here we have some wonderful documentation. This is our code. Yep. And this it's, is our... It slowly gets more organized as we go, but yep. um, here's what we've got so far. So we've got some of these things here. We've got like date. And then yep. it gives you some different the inheritance diagram you have all these different member functions um, it's very impressive yeah and you get the function documentation down here yep and then inside the documentation it can you can link into other documentation so the yep. day function returns a date day here it is yep very cool and then there you go that's that's Doxygen. That's Pretty Doxygen. It generates, auto generates your documentation for you. Yeah, and if you search over here, just seven segment for a cool example. And then segment. just. Yeah, so segment. Yeah, segment digit. That'll do. There you go. Click any of them. Yeah, nice. Yeah, so it's all got um, yep. it's all got documents, but if you scroll all the way to the top, you might even have a picture embedded. Ah, oh, yeah, look at that. Yeah, so you can embed pictures and How did you embed the pictures? You can embed files. Split the file path relative oh. to your project, and then it's oh, in. okay. So when it compiles, if the image is there, it'll pull it, yeah, and embed it as the, as part of the HTML. Yeah. Wow. Nice. Nice. That's yeah. yep. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, and the whole library yep. is like documented like this. Nice. The common code is all yep. documented. The device specific stuff, not so much. Sweet. We still got to get. Well, that's something that's coming. All right. There you go. Thank you very much, David. That is how to set up. <laughs> well, how he sets up. Anyway, you didn't have to. As we said, you could have just installed STM Cube or whatever it is. And yeah, use GCC 7.4. And GCC 7, whatever it is. Does, it, does it come with it when you download it? Does it come yeah. with GCC? Yeah, it, just, it runs. It, it's just as a package. It doesn't it come just, with Doxygen. It does right, come no, with no. assistance to help you um, right. the syntax of Doxygen. Yeah. But I don't think it actually right. installs it for you. Yeah. So that's the plain vanilla version, which I would have used if I was writing this. Yeah. yeah. Or if I was had to take over the code, I'd just <laughs> load the, be loading the code into that. And but this will it out. work more for yeah. a, for a longer period for you, right? Because you know CMake will let you change compilers as they update, right? If you, yeah. If, oh yeah, no. Then this is the professional way to do it, right? This the is, second yeah, GCC yeah, yeah. ten comes out. You yeah. just select it from that list at the yeah. bottom of the screen. Yeah, you got GCC ten. Nice. Um, yep. Yeah, that's nice. But sometimes you don't want that. No. Sometimes you want to. You want to stick around. You want to. You want to. You want to archive that version that you used to build it. Yeah. That's it. All right. Well, that's very cool. Thank you very much. That was like an hour and a half video or something. Two hours. Probably longer. Two hours yeah. maybe. Now I got to edit it. And get a USB C power supply. Yay! Yep. Catch you next time. <laughs>